Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for, uh, for doing this today, um, including our Secretary Javier Becerra, uh, who uh, is here, the Surgeon General, Vivek Murthy, and our Deputy Director of Domestic Policy, Kristen Young, Deputy Director of National Economic Council, Samara, is going to sit right behind me and I'd do all the hard work, uh, as well as a group of manufacturers from Infant Formula joining us virtually. Thank you all again. Look, uh, as a father and a grandfather, and I'm sure we all feel this way, understand how difficult this shortage has been for families all across the country. There's nothing more stressful than the feeling you can't get what your child needs, or he or she needs. And it's why I've directed my administration to use every tool available to increase the supply, get more formula on shelves as quickly as possible. Working with manufacturers to reopen factories that have closed and ramp up production quickly. So we can increase the availability of infant formula and lower the cost for American families. We're, uh, we're here today to hear from these manufacturers and to get updates on the progress we're making together. The shortage of baby formula is due to the closure back in February of one of Abbott's infant formula plants. We need to take immediate action to stop contam we needed to take immediate action to stop contaminated, contaminated formula from hitting store shelves and putting American children at risk. The last thing we should ever do is allow unsafe formula to be sold to parents. Instead, we should increase the production of safe formula to make every American family so they can get what they need for their child. That's the approach we've taken. The Food and Drug Administration acted quickly to bring Abbott back into compliance with safety standards, but it takes time. Abbott accounts for about 40% of the overall infant formula market in the United States. And this factory was one of their leading plants. So, since February, my administration has been working diligently across to uh, the, uh, every spectrum we could find to address this shortage and to bring more infant formula into the country and onto shelves. We've taken three key actions. First, we invoke what is known as the Defense Production Act, a measure that makes sure that manufacturers are the first in line for material and ingredients they need to make safe, high-quality instant formula at home. To date, Secretary Becerra has approved three authori authorizations of the Defense Production Act, three, so that companies like Ricketts, joining us here today virtually, can now get oils and filters they need to increase production of their, uh, and their factories in Indiana and in Michigan. Second, we launched Operation Fly Formula, the major effort to airlift infant formula that meets Americans' health standards and safety standards. Today, I'm proud to say that because of these flights, high-quality formula is already on the way to American shelves. We've already conducted two flights with 1.5 million eight-ounce bottles of Nestle and Gerber's hydro, excuse me, hypoallergenic formulas for children with severe allergies. Without Operation Fly Formula, we wouldn't have taken, would have taken, we've taken three weeks to get this product to the U United States. Because of our action, it took three days. And it's heated, uh, uh, the request that people had, and it's headed to American shelves. And I want to thank the Department of Agriculture for helping fund and support Operation Fly Formula. And today, I'm announcing plans for a third flight with Bubs Australia. And, and the CEO, Bubs Christy Carr, is with us today, uh, virtually today. This flight would bring 4.6 million bottles of infant formula and pave the way for up to 27.5 million total bottles of Bubs infant formula to be supplied to American families in the weeks ahead. Third, the Food and Drug Administration is reviewing applications for another new high-quality imports to increase our supply. In addition to getting Bubs formula through the process, on Friday, FDA announced that, that Kendall NutriCare would be able to import formula from the UK. Today, we're announcing the United Airlines has agreed to offer cargo space for Kendall NutriCare uh, for the delivery of 3.7 bottles of the formula here in the States. I want to thank United Airlines for partnering with us to get this done. They're doing it on their own the first flight next week, continuing over the next two to three weeks. And Target, the department store, has agreed to partner with Kendall NutriCare 
to distribute this formula quickly to American families in stores and online. And still we have work to do, though. But we're making critical progress. And today I look forward to hearing from these leading manufacturers to learn more about their actions they're taking to increase supply to American families and to discuss how my administration can continue to support their efforts. Speeding up manufacturing, helping move goods faster from factory floors to store shelves. In addition to the companies I mentioned, I also uh, I, I will also hear from uh, Byheart uh, operation out of Pennsylvania. We need more new entrants uh, uh, into the infant formula market like them, like Byheart. And finally, we're going to hear from the Surgeon General on what he's doing to help families get information they can trust as we continue making progress to resolve this shortage. To the work ahead is not going to be easy, but we will continue to work around the clock with manufacturers, states, doctors, and families. And that includes working with states to ensure that, with the help of the Department of Agriculture, we continue to cut the red tape for families to participate in the Women and Infants Children Program, the so-called WIC program. I recently signed legislation to help make it easier for families to get the formula they need through the WIC program. I called on all 50 states to take action, and all 50 states answered the call, working with us to make that program more flexible. And we're going to stay focused on, going, on doing even more. I'm going to make sure the families in every part of the country can get the formula they need. And I look forward to our conversations today. So I want to thank you all. And uh, now uh, you, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Secretary, Mr. Secretary. I'm going to have you speak now and your remarks, and then we're going to hand it over uh, to, uh, to Samara, to my behind me here. All yours, Mr. Secretary. Mr. President, let me start by thanking you for convening today's roundtable. At your direction, we are working 24-7 to get infant formula into the hands of parents across the country. Uh, as my team at HHS recently told Alexa, a mom from Leesburg, Virginia, whose son's a one-and-a-half-year-old and a, a six-month-old, requires specialty infant formula. Getting more formula, particularly specialty formula, on shelves quickly and safely is a priority for us. Mr. President, thanks for your leadership. Uh, and thanks to that leadership, we have partnered with federal colleagues across the, the administration to support Operation Fly Formula to bring formula in from other countries and bring it in swiftly and safely. In addition, the FDA is working with Abbott to get its facility to reopen safely, and we are working to quickly and safely bolster the supply of products so that the industry can get them to people in urgent need with a focus on specialty formula. Under a consent decree with the FDA, Abbott agreed to take corrective actions following an FDA inspection of its Sturgis, Michigan facility actions that are expected to ultimately result in an increase in the safety of infant formula. As I have invoked the uh, Defense Production Act three times already, uh, that was done to accelerate delivery of raw materials needed to manufacture infant formula for Americans, uh, America's families. And one more important point. Uh, at HHS, we have launched a new online hub hhs.gov slash formula to help parents and caregivers navigate their baby formula options. Uh, at hhs.gov slash formula, parents and caregivers can connect to community resources, such as community centers or an accredited food bank. They can connect to uh, preliminary recommendations from physicians and clinicians, and they can check if the brand of formula they rely on was affected by Abbott's recall. We invite feedback from the public and plan to update this page further in the coming days. And all of this information can be found in multiple languages. We're engaging governors across the country so that they too have the latest information on how to help families in their states navigate their needs. And we're working closely with the U.S. Department of Agriculture to support the special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infant, and Children, the WIC program, to ensure WIC families can access new supplies of baby formula as they become available. We will keep working 24-7 to make sure parents have the infant formula they need. But remember, HHS, FDA, USDA, we're not manufacturers. We need infant formula manufacturers and the industry as a whole 
to keep stepping up and working with us. As you've made clear, Mr. President, only together can we solve this challenge and get families the infant formula they need. And with that, let me now turn to Deputy Director Samira Fazli uh, for her comments. Thank you, Secretary Becerra. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We, what we'll do now is turn to the manufacturers and get some updates. We last spoke to you in mid-May, heard about the work you were doing, building upon a lot of the work that the administration had been doing diligently since February. Um, but I want to begin with Robert Cleveland. And since we last spoke to you, we've now invoked the Defense Production Act and want to hear how the Defense Production Act is enabling RECIT to speed up its production of infant formula. Sure, I'd be happy to address that. And thank you for convening this roundtable. Uh, so, you know, as the next largest manufacturer of scale after Abbott in the United States, getting as many feedings to shelf as possible has been an enormous priority for us. We've left no stone unturned in the way we can do that safely and in a high quality manner. And you know, since the since the recall event occurred, there are a number of actions we've taken. Um, first and foremost, our plants are running 24 seven with unlimited overtime. We've optimized our portfolio to focus on those products that move through our plants the fastest. And we've worked with our retail and our distribution partners to ensure that our trucks are getting to distribution centers and prioritized with our retail partners like Walmart and Target, Kroger, such that our trucks are unloaded first and feedings get to shelf faster. Because it's not just about more, it's about how much more we can put at shelf. And since the recall began, or since the beginning of the year, we have been able to increase the amount we've put to market by over 30% and to do it 40% faster. To dimensionalize that a little bit more, that's about 211,000 more infants that we're feeding after the recall than before the recall. But to address your question directly on the impact of the Defense Production Act, uh, when we spoke to the White House middle of last month, there were a number of very rapid actions that the government took and we're very appreciative of them. Part of it is the Defense Production Act. We have been a ben the beneficiary of one implementation of that that got us some essential oil to our manufacturing process. But there've also been calls from staffers from the NEC and HHS um, to other in uh, manufacturers who, who supply to us. And those calls alone have been helpful. And because of those calls, because of all that's been done, we now have a production schedule in June where we're looking to produce 40 million feedings per week. And that's because we have a special response or a special and temporary responsibility to produce more than half of the infant formula in the US. And our employees are dedicated to meeting that responsibility. And in fact, over Memorial Day weekend, worked to produce another 5 million feedings at our plants in Michigan and Indiana. And they couldn't have done that without the efforts to get us more inputs through the DPA and the efforts of the staffers at HHS and NEC, and we're deeply appreciative. But the other thing I wanted to lead to is that we can do even more. And so we have a unique opportunity with our brand Enfamil, which has fed generations of infants in the US and is the most trusted by pediatricians and mothers. And with that unique position, we've submitted applications to the FDA to bring formula in from our world-class facilities in Singapore and Mexico. And if those applications are approved, we believe we can bring enough formula in to add an additional 250,000 infants on the ones we were already feeding post the recall and come a long way to substantially ending this crisis. And if those approvals happen fast enough, we can make an impact as soon as this month. Uh, and we're really looking forward to working with the HHS and the FDA in processing those applications as quickly as we can. But you know, in closing on, on my opening remarks, I just wanted to recognize the efforts of the USDA um, and the local governments that implement the program. Uh, we've been working to fill the gap um, created by the, the shutdown of the Sturgis facility ever since it happened. And the flexibility of the administration of that program has allowed manufacturers like ourselves um, and our retail partners to be able to 
put product at the shelves that WIC participants can more easily access. And since they are the most vulnerable in our society, uh, I just want everybody to know those efforts have been fruitful, meaningful, uh, and I know we're feeding more WIC participants because of them. So thank you for the efforts for the government, from the government, the USDA, to improve flexibility in that regard. And if there are other questions later, I'm happy to answer them. Robert, I'd like to ask a question, if I may. Um, what, yes, tell us about what changes you've made to move the formula faster uh, from your factory to the floor shelves. I mean, what uh, you talked about the trucks and about priorities. And are there other things you've done as well? Uh, yes, sir. So typically the process would, the way our process would work is we would make our product. It would go through its normal quality release checks, be released into a system that then eventually becomes visible to retailers to order from. What we've done now is to make sure that every retail partner we have is aware of the moment that product is released from quality, their order is waiting for it, the truck is booked to ship it to their facility, and once it gets to their facility, it's prioritized among all the other deliveries that they receive to get to shelf as fast as possible. And again, those changes in totality, we believe we're now delivering product to market 40% faster than we were prior to the recall. Um, and again, it's, it's partnership up and down the line, sir. One last question. Did you, and I'm gonna ask this to your other colleagues, did you anticipate that the closure of the Abbott facility because it was produced, not producing the quality that was necessary, that would have this profound an effect immediately? Or did it, it, or did it take a little time to? I think, no, sir, we were, we were aware of the general impact that this would have. And so from the moment that that recall was announced, uh, we reached out immediately to retail partners like Target, Walmart, to tell them this is what we think will happen. And this is the inventory we have on hand right now. You should order it. And any inventory in your distribution centers should be pushed to shelves as fast as possible. And, and they've been great partners in taking all of those actions. And then of course, as the recall has gone on, um, more specific impacts have been felt and we've learned and adjusted to those as well. But no, we, we knew from the very beginning, this would be a very serious event. I met early on with those CEOs and they were, they, they, they were trying to figure out how they could move quickly. And uh, you, you've been very helpful, so thank you. Thank Sorry. you, Robert. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that. 40% faster um, is, you, is incredible and just a testament to the work that you and your team have been doing with all your partners. True, and I'm going to turn to you next. Um, you know, while most of us here in the U.S. know of, know of your company as Gerber, we know that Gerber and Nestle um, are essentially the same, the same brand. Wanted to um, get an update from you on the work that Gerber has done since Operation Formula helped them bring um, so much um, Nestle specialty formula to the U.S. market. Can you give us an update on um, your ability to distribute uh, that product to the families that need it? Uh, thank you, Samira. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with yourself, the president, and members of the administration. Uh, if I could first start by saying uh, we take this responsibility very seriously to be part of the solution. Uh, and in fact, uh, without overstating it, at Gerber, we feel this is our national duty. And we have crisis teams that are operating today, three and a half months after the recall, with the same level of urgency as we did when I got that first phone call informing me of, of the crisis situation. This is demonstrated by our factories that continue to run 24-7. Uh, we have, in fact, from our domestic demand, increased 60% additional supply to the marketplace since the recall. And as you mentioned, Samir alluded to the broader Nestle, we're leveraging the full power of the entire Nestle network to be able to come to our aid in, in, at, this, at this time of crisis. One of the things we will not compromise on, obviously, is quality and safety. That's a core, core principle at Nestle. So everything we do, even in these very dynamic and fluid times, we make sure that every product that goes out meets our highest standards. And the president alluded to that as well. Uh, when referring to operation fly formula. 
That has been a, uh, a very powerful statement. The same urgency was shared by the administration. And since we've received, to your specific question, uh, Samira, since we've received uh, 60 tons of uh, that product on one shipment and uh, uh, this, uh, another shipment with the, uh, with the Nestle Health Science product, we have been rapidly moving those products through our distribution centers into the marketplace. In fact, the product, and it was a privilege and a very proud moment for me to be with our First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, and our Surgeon General, uh, uh, Dr. Murthy, to get the, since that time, those 40% of those cans that were received have already been made their way to the store shelves, to hospitals, and other uh, high need areas. So from our perspective, uh, Fly Formula has been very helpful for us. Again, the president alluded, we shaved off weeks from normal transit time. Uh, we're getting product out the shelf as quickly as we can turn it around. Uh, and, and, and then finally, if I may add, is the same uh, point that Robert uh, alluded to earlier and the president alluded to as well. Working with the FDA under the enforcement discretion, we have submitted multiple proposals of, again, high quality formula that has the potential of bringing in nine and a half million individual eight ounce servings over the course of the next month and a half. We're of course following all process. Uh, we have to follow the details here, make sure the recipes are compatible with our current recipes. We can track the product uh, as well as make sure that the label is in English for easy translation and obviously easy, easy comprehension and have no translation issues. So again, we're a small player at Gerber, but we believe now is the time to go above and beyond. Can I ask a question? <laughs> how, uh, how are you supporting families that participate in the, uh, in the WIC program, in the, in the special supplemental nutritional program, you know, women, infants, children? When, when I spoke with the, uh, with the retailers, we talked about making sure that they could be able to purchase, you can limit what you purchase under WIC and based on the size of the container and the like. And we worked out a deal where they could, whatever container was available would be the ones that we used and they would not be limited to being able to be stuck with if you only had an X, X ounces or whatever. What, what have you been doing to accommodate that or talk about that with your, with your customers? Uh, Mr. President, that hits to the heart of the matter. Uh, in terms of WIC families, Gerber currently has seven contracts. However, working very closely, and big thanks to the USDA's flexibility, uh, specifically referring to what you uh, alluded to in terms of substitution uh, opportunities, uh, can size flexibility, uh, we now have, in addition to our seven WIC contracts, which we must protect to ensure product is available where we have contracts, but today you will find Gerber product available in all 35 Abbott WIC contract states. Uh, that comes through a lot of work on the ground with, uh, again, I represent a large uh, number of teams and number of colleagues across the US and across uh, even Europe and across the world supporting us in this matter, uh, working with the WIC offices on a local level, making sure our products are available for them in their formularies. Uh, the WIC parent may shop uh, at, a, at a WIC office, they may shop at a retail, they have mul multiple different uh, distribution options, and we make sure our product is available through all of those means. So we've been able, again, taking advantage and full partnership with the USDA to get our product available, both the product that is normal term usage, but also the specialized products that we have, because there are WIC families that have uh, needs for those products as well. Uh, in fact, that is a core, core part of how we want to move forward is make sure product is available for the WIC families. And then if I could build on that a bit, we're also making sure our specialized products, which have a unique need in the marketplace, is available through children's hospitals and other home health care partners where it's not a traditional chat. So it really is a, uh, a, a, a number of different initiatives across multiple touch points where the WIC family has to be supported to make sure that they get the product. And we believe we're working very closely with the administration and having good success on that, sir. Really important. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry for no, interrupting. No, and USDA has done incredible work to approve a lot of those waivers in 24 to 48 hour timelines since February. And um, as the president laid out, all 50 states finally took action after after he called them to task a few weeks ago on that. Um, and you know, the 35 Abbott states that you mentioned. 
Um, some of that was also due to USDA's effort to work with Abbott to make sure that um, companies like yours were able to get your product into those store shelves. So thank you, Tarun, for that update. Thank you, Samara. Murray, I'm going to turn to you next. Um, a lot of uh, families might not be familiar with the name Perigo, but I know that you, you provide a lot of the manufacturing for the private label brands that they may be buying at a Target or a Walmart. Um, so can you speak to us about what you've done to scale up production um, since February and the result of all that effort that you and your company have taken? Sure. First off, um, thank you for the opportunity to, to be here, Samira, and thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership in this crisis. We all appreciate it. Um, we are indeed a private label manufacturer, and for those who aren't familiar with that, we don't actually market a national brand ourselves. We enable competition, and we, we pack for um, 18 national um, store brands. Those are the retailers' brands and several national um smaller branded marketers. So um, in, in essence, we are creating competition and um, those store brands um, sell for about half the price of the national brand. So we're, we're proud that we provide an affordable, accessible while still maintaining um, um, superior quality. Consistent with our vision to make lives better, we play a vital role in providing access to affordable infant formula. And we, as I said, we also foster competition. Now, when I joined the company about three years ago, we saw the need for strengthening um, the resiliency of our infant formula business. And over the last three years, we put about $100 million into the facilities so that they would be reliable and they would be resilient. And that's benefiting us tremendously right now. Like what you heard from everyone else so far, our 500 associates and our manufacturing facilities in Ohio and Vermont are running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and have done so all while navigating global supply chain shortages and tight labor market. Let me walk you through the specific steps to increase output. The very first thing we did when we heard about the Al Abbott recall was we could foresee that this was gonna create a tremendous shortage. We um, significantly increased all our material orders. Um, we began communication with the FDA immediately we began collaborating closely with the, you know, the FDA, our retail customers, and other stakeholders to identify and prioritize what was most critical. And we've been meeting, by the way, weekly with the FDA ever since. The very first thing that we did was take one facility and run a year's worth of hypoallergenic formula because we believe that was most critical. After that, that, that the second thing and what we've done ever since is focused on the highest um, four formulas, volume formulas in the category to feed as many babies as possible with a formula that most closely resembled um, what the, the babies were already eating. Um, re remember, as a private label manufacturer, it's our job to, to, and we strive to develop products that are designed to be almost exactly the same as the national brand. So it wouldn't be a, a change for infants. And because of that, we felt we had a a unique responsibility and it was in collaboration with our our customers and the retailer that we picked the four that we focused on by focusing on four um, we were able and still today are running out at 115 percent above of our maximum capacity so our theoretical capacity we're we're running millions of pounds um, more and in the four months of 2022 um, our output is up 32%. We, that is, we shipped 32% more product than a year ago through the combination of that higher output and um, the use of the safety stock inventories we had. That, that's gigantic for us. Um, Mr. President, we appreciate you making your staff, the FDA, and most recently HHS representatives available to us to, right from the beginning. Like, like I said, it was within a matter of days. Um, to help get through this crisis. And I can assure you that Perigo is doing um, everything that can be done um, in order to help. We are well prepared. We are not having supply pr problems. We are not having supply issues. We are running full out and will continue to do so for as long as um, needed. And we are continuing to make investments and will continue to invest going forward to support increased reliability and capacity in the, 
the industry. Our company is proud to be part of the solution to the shortage as no family should have to worry about being able to feed their baby. So once again, thank you for your leadership on this crisis. Well, thank you for doing such an incredible job of moving so quickly. Thank you. Um, well, um, it was helpful to get an update from the kind of leading domestic manufacturers, but we're, we're going to switch gears a little bit and switch countries and talk about um, one of the um, new actions that we have taken is that the FDA um, has uh, put in place new flexibilities to allow imports to bring new entrants into the market. Um, and so, Christy, I want to turn to you next to tell us about um, about your company, about Bubs, and the formula you make, and how soon we're going to be able to get that formula here in the U.S. now that the FDA has approved you um, for sale and distribution. Um, although I should probably ask you first, what time is it down there? <laughs> it's, uh, it's around 4 o'clock in the morning, but uh, now that we run a 24-7 operation, and I think uh, most of the Bubs team now feel like they're on Washington, D.C. time, so... So that's perfectly okay. And uh, Mr. President, I'd like to start by saying uh, just what an honour it is to be able to be here and, and talk to you personally. And I thank you for inviting um, myself on behalf of Bob's Australia to participate in this important roundtable conversation. Uh, so Bob's Australia is uh, Australia's leading uh, vertically integrated brand of infant formula. Uh, I first founded the business uh, 17 years ago when my first daughter was born. And over those 17 years, we have been uh, nourishing uh, children both here in Australia and in the 10 markets that we export over 1 million babies without, without incident. We are very passionate about uh, feeding the next generation of children with clean, safe and reliable infant nutrition products. So uh, we already um, sell our Aussie Bubs uh, toddler milk uh, formula products in the United States, in many retailers across the states. And as we've started to see this infant formula shortage unfold, and, and I've uh, visited the states uh, a couple of times already this year, um, we knew we wanted to help. Uh, I'm sitting here in our Bubs Australia facility in Victoria, the dairy capital of Australia. It is a FDA approved facility uh, and we had already started the journey for having our three lines of infant formula products uh, approved for uh, export into the United States. Uh, we knew that our products already met the FDA uh, nutritional requirements. Uh, so we made contact uh, with yourselves, with the administration and with the FDA. Uh, and I, I am very, I'm very pleased to be able to now be in a position where we can help uh, help the, the situation. And I commend you, Mr. President, on being able to bring government and regulatory and industry together to help solve this problem um, uh, as one collective group. Uh, Obviously, uh, logistics and moving this quantity of, of infant formula in a short period of time is, is complex. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for uh, including Bubs Australia in uh, Operation Fly Formula. Uh, so that as, as you uh, mentioned, the White House has announced today um, that we are now in a position to fly our first two uh, air cargo carriers over to the United States. Uh, um, we will be uh, sending two planes uh, full of our infant formula products next week with the first plane leaving on June 9 to uh, fly into Pennsylvania and the second plane leaving on June 11 to fly into California. Uh, across those first two planes is about 380,000 pounds of infant formula or the equivalent of uh, 4.6 million uh, standard eight ounce baby bottles. Um, we are now working alongside the HHS uh, to, uh, to determine when the first possible um, time is to bring in the next two planes. Um, and we plan to do that in, in the coming weeks. 
So our, our strategy around distribution is to be able to um, uh, initially put our products into the distribution centres on both the West and East Coast. Um, we will be distributing our products to both the major uh, uh, retailers of infant formula, as well as some of our smaller retail partners um, to make sure that we uh, prioritise the states that are most in need and, and of course the vulnerable population areas um, who need infant formula uh, uh, most. So um, again, I just really like to take this opportunity um, to thank you, Mr. P Mr. President and your administration, um, both the HHS and, and, and the USDA have been working with us around the clock um, since this new initiative took place. Um, and we are delighted we're able to um, help out in some way and bring uh, Bub's infant formula products uh, to American families. You're helping out a great deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, that partnership is going to continue with, with these Operation Fly Formula flights. We continue to work to make sure there aren't regulatory barriers, border barriers to bringing this stuff in quickly. So we will continue to be working with you, Christy, and, and others. Um, well, let me turn it next to, to Ron, because it's not like new entrants are only sitting overseas. There's a lot of entrepreneurs and innovators here in the U.S. So want to hear from you about how your company was recently able to receive FDA approval and the steps that you're now able to take to ramp up production as one of our kind of first new companies in this space in a long time. Although I should also say, like, you may also not know what time it is, I hear, because I hear you may have a new entrant in your family as well. So uh, thank you for joining us despite being a new father, I think, as of last week. Yes, correct. Well, look, first of all, thank you for having me at this important discussion. Uh, you know, we launched in an unprecedented time when parents are more anxious than they've ever been. You know, no parent should have to experience a shortage of sole source nutrition for their baby. And I say that not just to CEO by heart, but as you point out, as a parent myself, my wife and I just had our second little one this past weekend. Uh, my co-founder and sister, Mia Funt, and I started by heart six years ago to translate major advancements in nutrition science and breast milk research into infant formulas that are the most wholesome and functional alternative to breast milk. You know, all parents deserve to feel proud in how they feed their babies. With Byheart's launch earlier this year, we became the first new infant formula manufacturer to be registered with FDA in this country in over 15 years. We started this work you know, well before a shortage with a motivation really to innovate. And we're grateful to the Biden administration and this FDA, it's kind of recognition for the need for new manufacturers. You know, with our launch, this became the first administration and FDA to register a new infant formula manufacturer in over four administrations. Having been immersed in this category 15 years, we knew full well the barriers to entry we were up against. You know, infant formula is appropriately the most highly regulated food in the world, and the consolidated supply chain makes it nearly impossible for new entrants. There were just four companies that manufacture infant formulas. Three of those dominate 90% of the category. And so every new entrant in decades has taken the same path to outsource to the one and only contract manufacturer in the country and rely on an expedited generics-like path to market, which only allows for incremental change based on existing recipes. Now, had we taken that path, we would have been on the market four years ago, but we didn't get into this for incremental change. We knew there was only one way to truly innovate for babies, and that was to build from scratch. And so we acquired and built manufacturing in Reading, Pennsylvania, we directly sourced all our ingredients to ensure we have complete oversight and highest quality. And we brought together the world's experts to completely rewrite the recipe and conduct the largest clinical trial from a new brand in 25 years to clinically prove our benefits. That's why it took us five years and not one. Well, now we are just one of five companies in this country that manufacture infant formula and we take that responsibility very seriously. Just two months into our launch, which saw unprecedented demand, pacing at 15 times our most aggressive projections, we are investing heavily into initiatives here at home in the US that can enable an additional over 500,000 new babies to be fed and put us in a position to feed some 15% of new births. We're investing heavily into Reading, Pennsylvania with a new $30 million investment. We're hiring relentlessly, adding a whole new shift. We're already working 24 hours a day, five days a week, 
we're in process of moving to 24 seven. Within days of the enforcement discretion policy being announced, we had two submissions into FDA to expand our manufacturing footprint and accelerate fulfillment to get parents formula quicker, all here in the US. You know, we're throwing everything we have at this crisis, but we can't do it alone. And we're grateful for the support we've received to date from the Commonwealth. Mia and I are in this moment ourselves. You know, Mia's third baby, Simone, is 10 months and actually drinking by heart. And my wife and I just had our second this past weekend. So we know personally and professionally that this country can never be in a situation again where one company has a recall and 40% of the country is without infant formula. And the only way we ensure that doesn't happen again is to invest in new domestic manufacturing, diversify the supply chain, and create that ecosystem for innovation in infant nutrition here in the United States. So that's what we've done and that's what we plan to continue to do. Good luck with the new Babel, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. I will say, as a, as a parent myself, hearing the kind of rigorous standards that the FDA has in place to bring new entrants into the market is reassuring um, and, uh, and shows how we have this science-based policy here to make sure that the formula that's available for families, whether it's through new imports or through new domestic entrants, is safe for, and healthy for families to have. Um, let me, now that we've had that update from the manufacturers and have a sense of how production is increasing, how new entrants and new supply is now um, on its way and already making its way to store shelves, I want to turn um, to have us talk a little bit about parents and what they're going through right now. Again, as a parent myself who had a child who was on a specialty formula and pretty recent, recently weaned, know that the administration has been taking a lot of steps to work um, with families to make sure they're, they're getting the support they need to make their way through this crisis. So I'll turn it over to Kristen. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samira. And thank you to all that that you all are, are doing as manufacturers to, to bring new supply to market and, and help us serve American parents. Um, but as we, we heard from all of you, this is just an incredibly challenging time for, for American families. Um, I, I too am a parent and I'm expecting my, my second child at the, at the end of this month. Um, and we, we know, we know how, how difficult and how scary this time can, can be for folks. Dr. Murthy, you have been talking to parents and doctors across the country about the challenges of this moment. Can you tell us a little bit about what you, what you think the key messages are that parents need to hear who are worried about finding formula for their families? Absolutely, well, thank you, Kristen. And yes, talking to communities, our public you know, information efforts have been a key part of this overall effort. Uh, I just wanna say also a thank you to everyone who has joined the manufacturers from around the world, really. Um, this has been a, a team effort. Uh, and you know, President Biden, thank you for making this a priority and for instructing everyone in this administration that no stone should be left unturned uh, in solving this problem. Uh, our military service members have moved mountains to make sure we can get formula to shelves here. And our departments like HHS, DOD, uh, USDA have also just pulled out the stops to increase production. All of this has made the progress possible that we've seen today, but we're not going to stop now. Uh, because a key group that's been involved in, the, in these efforts has been community groups, doctors and nurses, medical nursing organizations, uh, community institutions, which have stood up to help reassure patients and get them accurate information. And I want to thank those groups because we are really pulling together in this crisis. Uh, to all the parents out there who might be worried at this point about the food supply for your child, there, there are a few key messages I'd like to share with you today. Uh, the first is to know that while we are moving fast, and pulling out the stops here, safety is still our priority. Uh, we are bringing in formula from abroad, but only formula that meets the FDA's gold standards for safety. The FDA knows how important those standards are, takes its responsibility to provide safe formula to families very, very seriously. The second point I, I wanna share is that for safety reasons, we are recommending that there are certain things that you not do, uh, like water down formula or make formula uh, at home or use toddler formula for infants. I can absolutely understand why people may consider some of these options, but the FDA does not consider those safe at this moment, which is why we're not recommending them. The third uh, point I'd like to make is that it is okay to use a different brand of formula if the one that you're used to isn't on the shelf. And look, as a parent whose child is recently on formula, I know how scary it can feel sometimes to switch brands of formula. 
But the key thing to know is that if you find formula on the shelf, it is formula that has met the FDA's standards for safety. Uh, so that is the good news here. And the last point I want to make is that if you're a parent out there who's worried about food for your child, I want you to know that we are right here with you. We are standing alongside you, and we are not going to give up until this challenge has been met, until every parent has the formula that they need for their children. Um, we're going to continue to pull every lever that we have. And I want you to know that we approach this not just as public servants, but as parents as well. This is very personal to many of us who are parents or grandparents. And you've heard that already from uh, the folks here today. Uh, this is a few years ago. My son was on infant formula. Uh, and I can just imagine how I would have felt if that formula had not been available to, uh, to him. So I just want people to know that while we have made progress in increasing production, while we've made progress in bringing supply in from abroad, and taking steps to reopen the plant that was closed in Sturgis, that the, the company is now working uh, to get back into production, we are not going to stop until every family has a formula that they need for their children. That's our commitment to the public, not just as public servants, but as parents ourselves. So I'll turn it back to Samira. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. A few weeks ago when we met with you, you told us pull every lever, find new levers, do what you can do to to solve this challenge um, because it was weighing on families and it was important that we showed people what the government can do when it kind of is put to the test and brings everyone together. So since then, um, HHS, uh, the USDA, the US Department of Agriculture, the FDA have continued to pull together, um, working closely with manufacturers, as you've heard. We've brought some new, to, new ones to the table. We've worked closely with states. We got all 50 to take action. And we continue to work closely with the retailers uh, to kind of answer your charge. But I would um, turn it back to you now that we've given you this update on where we've, where we've gone and where we're headed. Well, I'll be very brief. Look, I, I used to have a friend, and uh, Vivek's heard me say this before, he used to say, you got to know how to know. You got to know how to know, meaning that uh, we need uh, what I've found as parents come up to me in the street and I talk to my family about it, and I don't have any infants in my family. I have, I have, uh, I have a two-year-old grandson, but that's he's beyond that. And uh, but. Uh, there's a lot of kids in my family, and uh, people will come up to me at my church or wherever, and uh, they want to know whether or not, even though they're not on a particular formula, that can they switch a formula? They, and and, and they're, because they hear about all the safety requirements, Doc, and you talk about it a little bit. You let, let people know that. There are things, there are options within even the limited supplies that are occurred, or you may not have the exact brand you used before, but another brand is in fact able to be used. And so I, I think that that's an important thing to, because the anxiety that men and women have, mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers with infants, is, is, is pretty profound. No one ever wants to make a mistake. And uh, it's, it's, so I think part of it is just, relieving a little bit of the anxiety. Once we have, we have significantly more formula available now, and we'll have significantly more in the next month or more. And as we get Abbott back online, there's going to be a whole lot more. We're going to solve the problem. But, um, you know, ensuring safety of a newborn child is, uh, is, is a mother and father's top priority. I mean, it's a, it's a basic, basic thing. It's been my top priority is a father and grandfather, and, and it remains at the top of my priorities today as President of the United States. You know, as we close, I want to thank all of you. I really mean it. I want to thank all of you for your updates and the progress you've made, because, you know, we've had other crises that I've dealt with as president and as vice president, and, but I find that this is almost personal to everybody, to the manufacturers, to the, to, to the it just it's, it's, it takes on a personal aspect to it. And, uh, you know, the hard work your employees have, uh, have made an important difference in restoring the supply for infant formula, but there's still a lot more to do. So I ask you to keep focused, stay focused, stay in high gear. We can't let up in the infant, in the infant formula market back uh, until it's all the way back to normal. And that's going to take a couple more months, but we're making significant progress. And, uh, and I thank the folks from down under as well. Uh, Christy, thank you very much. 
and for all the uh, all the uh, the way in which that uh, uh, we're bringing in foreman from around the world. Uh, that is again letting our constituents know, Doc, that it meets the standard. We're not bringing anything in that doesn't meet the highest standards. And so, uh, as uh, uh, as my grandfather would say, the grace of God and the goodwill of the neighbors and the creek not rising, we're going to make a lot more progress and ease the anxiety, the significant amount of anxiety on on the part of moms and dads of newborns. So, and uh, we particularly want to ease that anxiety on the staff. You know, we're gonna, that's going to be coming pretty soon. So, thank you all very, very much. I truly appreciate it. And uh, you've really answered the call. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it.